Hey there, my name's Alex Lokes and I've been doing film photography for two decades now. I picked up my first camera in 2002, a $5 Minolta Hymatic 7S at a garage sale after I took a media English course in high school, which first really exposed me, pun fully intended, to the wonderful world of photography. And I was lucky, my high school had a traditional darkroom in it. And the teacher I had, Steve Keen, actively encouraged the use of film. But then again, film was it. Digital was a luxury item still in 2000, 2001, when I first started. So film photography is in my blood. It's how I got started. And it has taken me so many places. Today, I have worked with Film Photography Project. I run my own podcast, The Classic Camera Revival, and I write my own blog, and now I have YouTube as well, where I just love being able to promote this hobby that I love. the best parts about photography, especially film photography, is the sheer variety of items available. You got a ton of film stocks, even still today here in the 21st century, and new films still being produced. I mean, Kodak is still in business, Ilford is still in business. You have FOMA, AGFA, Fuji even to a limited extent, not to mention formats, large format, ultra large format, 35 millimeter, 120, even instant film, Polaroid and Fuji Instax. You can really make the hobby what you want and you can take it as far as you want. When I first started, I was shooting cheap rebranded color negative film and taking it to my local hour lab and now I develop my own black and white. I even mix up my own developer. Yeah, there's just absolutely no limit to what this hobby can do and where it can take you. When I first started my film photography journey, the internet was not new, but the internet as we know it today was still in its infancy. Social media wasn't there, sites like Flickr, sure there were ideas like podcasts and all that, but there really was no online community. Of course that changed when the film photography podcast hit the scene and I had just started getting back into film. I had. Uh, received a Nikon F80 and that kind of rekindled my love and the FPP really sort of got me to go beyond 35 millimeter 124 by 5 home development and the best part is is that people like Matt Marash, Mike Rosso, Dwayne Polku were super helpful they they were always willing to answer they gave good advice and a lot of what i do and shoot today is because of the fpp so when i decided to start writing about photography rather than just sharing my photography on my blog in 2015 i kind of wanted to pay it back 
I wanted to share the knowledge that I had gained through my own experimentation to help newcomers. So that's really what I started the Classic Camera Revival podcast for. Eventually I got involved with the wider community, especially through Facebook. Um, other camera bloggers, Mike Ekman, Stephen Dowling, Hamish Gill, Jim Gray, uh, Theo, really helped hone my skills. And then of course the podcast community, Mike Ekman, um, again, Theo, Bill Manning, Mike Gutterman, just amazing groups of people, some of whom I've I haven't met. We know each other simply through the internet. But I still count them as lifelong friends. And sure, the film com community is far from perfect. We struggle with misinformation, disinformation, infighting, conflict, and not to mention matters of representation. Oh, women, black, people of color, indigenous, members of the queer community. We're far from perfect, but I honestly feel that we are getting better. Like anything, it's constant improvement, just like my own photography. One thing that I really do enjoy about photography is that it doesn't have to be about kit. But I do love a good piece of kit, don't get me wrong. And every camera I have I use in individual unique situations. Even my cell phone, my iPhone takes brilliant photos, it's always in my pocket and great for everyday snapshots. But it's about applying Creative, creative control over your images, executing a vision, slowing down. There, it is way too easy to shoot hundreds of photos these days. And sometimes it's just good to slow down, take two or three in a session, shoot a roll of film, 12, 15, 36. Slow down, think every time you press a shutter and Sure, a lot of people use the phrase, film slows me down. Well, I was in that same camp too for the longest time. But then I realized that it wasn't the film slowing me down, it was me. I was the one who was slowing myself down, thinking before each shot, putting a little bit of myself into every frame. And it truly has made me a better photographer overall.
So the real question is, why do I shoot film? It can be any number of reasons why, but if I had to sum it up in one single sentence, why do I shoot film? Because it's fun. And in the end, that's all it has to be.